on VLGA Connect today. We're in conversation with the Federal Minister for Local Government, Mark Colton. Welcome back to the program, Mark. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, Chris. Good to have you with us. Uh, since we last spoke, there's uh, a, a lot happened, obviously, in response to uh, to COVID at the local level. That's the, the big uh, item of discussion. How have you felt the sector has responded since we last talked, which was about 12 months ago? Uh, look, I think that the uh, local government sector has really stepped up uh, and taken the lead. Um, uh, it's interesting because um, quite often, you know, as a regional, you know, former mayor, uh, we always looked at... Uh, maybe with rose-coloured glasses at some of our metropolitan cousins, but uh, in some ways they really copped the brunt of the COVID downturn quite early on, uh, you know, because they are, a lot of them are sort of service, fee-for-service based um, budgets. And uh, the further and more remote you go, they're you know, largely grant-based councils. And so a lot of those uh, regional councils uh, stepped up, they re tasked staff with, um, uh, you know, maybe, you know, staff, the library's closed. So some of those folks went off and helped deliver Meals on Wheels and did all sorts of things. And then we've come in with uh, the uh, Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Fund, uh, two rounds of that. And uh, that uh, really uh, enabled them to create some local uh, projects, you know, designed to uh, create work for, for, for people who are disadvantaged uh, through the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, was also to uh, stimulate um, purchasing uh, all the raw materials through you know local suppliers, uh, but also leaving a, a longer term legacy for that community. And so I think from what I've seen, council stepped up admirably uh, into that space and have done a uh, uh, done a great job. And you know, as a federal government, we we really value the partnership uh, that we've been able to form with the local government uh, areas, the 537 of them around the country to, to you know, help deliver stimulus when we need to. Minister, a, a, an often raised topic this last few months has been local government not having a seat at the National Cabinet table. What's your view on how the sector can be appropriately heard in these conversations that have been happening? Yeah, so local government uh, does uh, have a seat at the at the uh, forum that I chair, which is all the local government ministers. They uh, they have a seat there. The, I think I should reinforce that that decision uh, on la the national cabinet wasn't a unilateral. It wasn't just made by the prime minister. It was a decision of the national cabinet, which is made up of the chief ministers and premiers and and uh, uh, and the and the prime minister. So uh, you know, it wasn't a federal government decision. It was decision of national cabinet, but. Through the uh, National Cabinet um, or the Coag reform process, there's a couple of places that local government can uh, can touch in. And even last week, uh, I had a meeting with local government ministers. Uh, uh, the, the the chair uh, was uh, of Alga was there. The president of Alga was on that call, and uh, uh, Linda Scott. And uh, uh, we discussed uh, uh, you know a paper that is now going to ultimately uh, hopefully be discussed by the National Cabinet. Okay, a um, couple of examples. I know you've had one up in the north and we've had one here in Victoria this last week where there's been a, in this case, a state government announcement of a potential quarantine facility. Uh, the federal minister has said, you know, we need to look at all the, the viewpoints, including the local uh, viewpoint on this. The local council said they hadn't been consulted. I guess it's a really difficult thing to navigate when you've got so many voices that want to be part of these discussions. Yeah, look, I think that local government should have a voice. I mean, as a, you know, not, not as a minister, but as a, you know, a federal member in charge of an electorate, I've got 18 councils in my, in my electorate. And, uh, um, and I always see that they are the electric, elected bodies uh, and primarily they should be the ones that speak for those towns. Now, it doesn't mean that I always agree with them and doesn't mean that uh, politically we're all on the same page, but uh, I do respect the role of, uh, of councils and particularly mayors to be the spokesperson for their area. And so uh, somewhere along the lines, there's, there's got to be a, um, a mechanism for local government to be involved. It doesn't always work out they can be the final arbiter. Sometimes, uh, you know, in, in major... I'm not sure in Victoria, but in New South Wales, they've got some of the bigger projects uh, sort of get stepped up to the state government to oversee on on planning and approval. But um, in most cases, I I certainly believe that they should uh, 
have a seat at the table uh, uh, because they are the ones that have been elected to represent the views of their communities. Do you step in on those sorts of issues and advocate for, for that particular um, uh, opportunity for the local government to be part of the conversation? To an extent, but I've uh, got to remember that local government is, is basically um, uh, under the control of the states constitutionally. Uh, uh, you know, there's been a few, those that have been around for a while, remember there's been a few court cases uh, uh, that query uh, any mechanism that the federal government uh, puts in place to put funds straight to the local government without going through the state. So uh, constitutionally, they are uh, under the control of, well, well, certainly closely managed by the states. And we've seen, you know, if a council uh, has, has serious issues, the state minister can, you know, uh, remove them and put in an administrator or whatever. So federally, we have a slightly different role. Uh, you know, we, th there's money that goes uh, uh, through the states, obviously, to them. From the federal government there's also the federal assistance grants that goes to all councils and then there's other mechanisms that we've used through drought through bushfire uh through recently through covid uh roads to recovery uh a whole range of other ways that we we do that so um i guess um we we have a slightly different role to the states and I, we see them as a as a partner uh, that we can, you know, that we can use at various times, but constitutionally, we we don't have a lot uh, of influence over each other. A couple of things you've mentioned already that I want to come back to. One being this uh, gathering of the local government ministers, that forum that you chair, and you've mentioned the Alga uh, president was there as well. I understand the latest meeting was uh, had a, a, a focused discussion on skills and capabilities to respond to this pretty extraordinary situation in regional areas, particularly where we've got record numbers of jobs that can't be filled. Yeah, so, you know, this week, the news is that uh, Regional Australia Institute's identified 66,000 jobs now across the regions. Um, you know, personally, I think we've spent a little bit too much focus on some of the entry level jobs, fruit pickers and the like, where it's across the full spectrum. And uh, local government is really feeling that as the, you know, the the, I guess the, the silver lining in the COVID pandemic is that regional Australia has really come out of this very favourably. And so, you know, as uh, uh, people look to move to the regions, they want to build a house, they want to buy a block of land, uh, that's putting enormous pressure on councils. Uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they, you know, they need engineers to, to, you know, to design the infrastructure. They, they need town planners, uh, they need health uh, uh, surveyors and all of that and so in some cases they do struggle to find those people and I'm, I'm a great believer in growing your own uh, um, you know I know I know an engineer in one of the councils in my electorate that uh, started off as a trainee plant operator and uh, the council paid for him to ultimately do a degree and uh, and become an engineer and I think uh, in, in a lot of country areas the council is the largest employer in town uh, they um, can play a role um, and the federal government's apprenticeship program, the 50% subsidy for apprentices, uh, councils are eligible for that as well. So uh, we, we've put a paper out looking at uh, the capability issues of local government, how we might overcome that from, from obviously bringing in uh, uh, a skilled workforce to, to growing our own. And I think uh, uh, quite often um, uh, growing our own is, is a great option. And I think, you know, uh, it wasn't that long ago that, uh, the mindset was for a young person to have a, a decent start in life, they had to leave. Um, now we need to, uh, I think, show a bit of creativity to let them be the ones that take up the opportunities that are in their own backyard. And so there's a bit of work to do, obviously, around uh, education facilities, you know, training, uh, tertiary uh, training uh, in, in some of those areas. Uh, but, uh, but, but I think councils can play an important role. And, and even if they're apprentices don't end up having a long-term um, uh, career with the council chances are they'll probably stay in the in the region and uh, they'll still be an asset to the to the region so I think there's a, a role councils can play and uh, certainly looking forward to uh, national cabinet looking at that paper uh, when it gets to it you might have just answered my question I was going to ask where does all this go and what sort of tangible outcomes do you see coming from those discussions yeah so the next step is it goes to the uh to the ministerial meeting uh, chaired by the deputy prime minister on, on regional ministers, uh, and then if they uh, if they approve, it will then go on to national cabinet. So uh, that's uh, that's what we're up to, and uh, I'm very confident that it will get there, and uh, that we can then um, you know formulate policy around that. 
All right, look forward to hearing what comes uh, from that. Now, the last time we spoke, and I think at the last National General Assembly, of course, there wasn't last year, um, you mentioned that you were keen to hear from people around how they thought the federal assistance grants system could be improved or reformed. Yeah. What sort of response have you had to that? Uh, interesting, quite a quite a, a, a positive response. Uh, the position of some of the peak bodies is still uh, uh, we we just want a one percent of uh, of gross revenue, and uh, uh, we you know across the board. Um, but you know, I believe that um, we need to look at the formula. It's been in place now for I think forty odd years, and uh, so uh, a lot of the Funding with the FA grants has followed the population as the cities of and the regional, you know, the larger regional centres have grown at the expense of the smaller ones. So, what's interesting though is what I've said to the sector is I said you you need to tell me what you want. Uh, you know, this is not not just a job for me to uh, to go uh, and, and change things around if it's not what the sector wants. So, uh, uh, the Victorian Minister Sean Lean, uh, he's he's actually. Uh, done quite a bit of work in this space his department has uh, he's consulted with uh, many of the Victorian councils uh, around this and and I, and I believe even uh, with his ministerial colleagues uh, in Victoria uh, I know I got a letter from the New South Wales country mayors uh, looking for uh, uh, you know some changes uh, to the formulas and uh, so you know I was in South Australia met with some regional councillors there so uh, I'm expecting that some of those um, issues might come up to the fore at the ALGA conference, and if the uh, body as a whole, uh, you know, uh, can articulate a clear direction, then I'm happy to be their champion to uh, to make that happen. But I, I think at the moment um, it, it needs to be um, uh, the sector needs to actually own the changes that they want. It's a fairly complex sort of system, isn't it? I know it takes a bit to understand how it works. Is there room, yeah. do you think, for more? flexibility around the country so it's not necessarily the same wherever you go in terms of what uh, those well, formulas are applied. Well, one of the complexities, uh, Chris, is that it's uh, uh, every state has a slightly different formula. And so yeah. uh, they have their grants commission in every state that distributes that. And uh, uh, that was the first lesson I got as a minister, re realising yeah. that, that there was that level of complexity. And so uh, one of the only... One of the things that is not flexible is the minimum grant uh, of 30% of the grant being tied to population. Uh, so, you know, all the other complexities aside, that's probably the focus uh, of that. And uh, obviously there's some sensitivities to the larger councils uh, on that, but it doesn't need to be because ultimately the Grants Commission on each state decides uh, where the yeah, where the balance of those funds be distributed. Uh, and at the moment, they've sort of got a pretty clear range except for the minimum grant requirement. So that's sort of, that's the argument that's coming through. Uh, yeah, we really need to let the states um, decide their own formulas. Uh, but uh, um, to say that it's a, 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 you know, a open and shut case and there's clear support in the sector would be overstating it, Chris. There, there are very differences of opinion uh, on this, and uh, you know I think it's an ideal time to have a discussion. Good luck wading through all of those different uh, no, opinions. Good. We'll, we'll yeah. wait to see where it lands. Uh, you also yeah. mentioned earlier the uh, the challenges, I guess, of uh, the federal government being able to provide support directly to local government. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your local roads and community infrastructure fund has been one of those examples where you can directly yeah. influence projects on the ground. Uh, yeah. Looking at a third round of funding, potentially? Certainly, uh, uh, certainly th those discussions are taking place and uh, uh, budgets coming up very soon. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, if there's any announcements in that space, that'll be the time uh, to, to look for them. But uh, they have been, you know, the success of those local roads community infrastructure funds is that locally, basically, councils get to decide. I mean, they have to get the final tick from the department to make sure that it is value for money as such. But, you know, some councils have focused on uh, on, on community infrastructure. Some have put a high percentage on to, onto their country road network. So uh, it uh, it does give a fair bit of um, a choice to the, to the local councils, but... Uh, it does provide a, a, a you know, large degree of stimulus into those areas and uh, has kept uh, many uh, people in employment uh, over the last 18 months that otherwise may have struggled. So stay tuned on that one, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this yeah. space.
<laughs> watch this space. Now, speaking of watching this space, I've been watching the space behind you. Uh, I'm <laughs> assuming this is this is your property. And now, correct me if I get this wrong. Gwydershire is that how you say? Gwydershire, yes. So you're uh, the former uh, mayor of Gwydershire, aren't I, you? I, I am. I am. Uh, my brother's now the mayor, and uh, my father was a previous mayor, but we won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we've had a uh, uh, for for yeah, your viewers. Uh, we had three years of absolute horrendous drought, and uh, uh, that uh, picture behind is a reminder that uh, uh, when it rains, things return. And uh, so, at the moment, we're having a great season, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's my weekend uh, occupation. So, my wife and I are running cattle there, and. Uh, uh, it's a nice, uh, a nice change from my my weekly duties. Fabulous! Looks, it looks terrific. Looks nice and lush and green at the moment, as you say. A reminder that yeah, things can no, change. Quite. Excellent to talk with you. Thank you for being so generous with your time. Always great to see you, and all the very best. We look forward to hearing more about those uh, issues that are developing in the coming months. Okay, thank you. Look forward to talking to you next time. We've been speaking with the Federal Minister for Local Government, Mark Colton. He's also the member for Parks, and uh, we really appreciate his time to cover all of those current issues of relevance to the sector more broadly across the country. You've been listening to a special episode of VLGA Connect. See you again soon.